I try. Okay, so uh, in the last few conferences, we didn't have a technology-oriented uh, um, speaks. So this time we've decided to do one uh, test and bring good uh, technology speakers uh, and Chafota. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, I think that everyone here, um, uh, every one of the speakers here is a good uh, speaker. It will be tech-oriented speech. 15 minutes for everyone. If it will be 16, I have to punch. The, and you can um, make some noise in order him to, uh, in order that the lecture will, will go down, the speaker will go down. The first one will be Shah Hotel. The lecture itself uh, was presented, uh, I think, everywhere in the world. Uh, not yet? Not in Israel? <laughs> Uh, so Shafar is from Checkpoint, great person, I'll give him the stage. <laughs> Which one of these works? Both. Um, okay, so, hello everyone. I'm counting my 15 minutes starting now. So unfortunately, yeah, we're not going to be talking about that. And this is a joke, by the way, for non-Hebrew speakers who don't know what it is. Uh, this is from 4chan. Anyway, um, my talk is uh, titled I Hunt the R69 Admin, um, Toning ISP Like a Box. And it's just a short disclaimer before we go on. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's not because we didn't want to. So, and obligatory, who am I? Um, my name is Shachal Tal. Um, yeah, such profile pic, much coolness, very professional. Um, so, I'm a father, I'm a husband, and uh, then I'm a geek. Um, I've been uh, nearly a decade uh, in the Israeli Defense Forces. Uh, I joined Checkpoint uh, just over a year ago, um, where, I, um, where I lead the vulnerability, uh, vulnerability research um, team. And uh, this is my right ankle. Uh, is that visible? Yeah, it's, uh, control of belief. That's my leg. Uh, and my other leg has a hexadecimal dump tattoo. And if you really want to see it, you can come by later. Uh, so, start with an agenda. So, um, introduction to TR69. Um, I'm going to tell you uh, why you should care. We're going to walk through uh, some of the landscape. We're going to follow to uh, some some phonage, uh, conclude, and uh, yeah, get to see some of that if you make it all the way to the end. And we still have more time. <laughs> so, uh, residential gateway security. Um, we all know it sucks. Uh, and this, this is going to be a challenge in 14, 14 minutes that I have left. Um, so there, there are a few good examples uh, where people have shown in the past uh, few years um, some instances of very poor security that residential gateway, um, residential domain is in. So this is the Internet Census from 2012 where this anonymous research, researcher um, uh, just proved that there are literally um, hundreds of thousands of devices just waiting to be controlled with default passwords. Um, and, and some very nice research from Rapid7, um, who, uh, really explored UPnP exploitation, uh, I think a year ago. And then there are also cyber criminal campaigns targeted specifically at, uh, uh, at residential gateway devices, and this is by Team Comrie. Um, and really, there's, uh, there's too many people to mention, but some of these guys have been doing really excellent work. So I'm kind of here to, to extend, uh, this notion. And uh, you know, talk about kind of uh, the state of affairs in this domain. TR69. Uh, so uh, you know, contrary contrary to what you think, um, the, it wasn't named by a giggling teenager, um, but a more or less respectable um, uh, forum or body called the, the Broadband Forum, which is previously known as the the Frame Relay Forum, the DSL Forum. Um, but this is a consortium of major players in, in uh, the telco industry and inter internet service providers. And they're working together to make like um, standards, uh, standards, and, and work for common goals. So in 2004, um, they released the CPE WAN management protocol, which is TWMP, or just more commonly referred to as TR69. And over the years, they've made some amend, uh, amendments. Um, and 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 this and in this uh, uh, protocol or in this document, they really it's a 228-page document that really tries to use complex complex words like data model schema, um, 
and, and, and other uh, technical definitions to say uh, quite simple things. So let me kind of, uh, you know, sum up 200 pages for you. Um, shortly, right after, we tell you who is using this. So these are just some of the names for um, providers using this protocol. And as you can see, it's not uh, it's, it's not a rare thing. This is the de facto standard in the world. So very big names there. Um, there's a growing trend to adopt PR69. Uh, this is endorsed by home, uh, the Home Gateway Initiative, Digital Video Broadcasting, the WiMAX Forum. Am I that boring? I'm sorry. Okay. Then we'll just wait for them. What? I'll just keep going. So, um, 2011, uh, an estimated uh, 150, uh, 150 million devices online. And, uh, you know, some very interesting results from the guys at University of Michigan. Uh, you know, Zachary and his work there um, as dead map, the good map, the scanning project. So 7547, which is the default CWMP port, is actually open um, on 1.12% of IPv4, which makes it the second most popular open port in the world, in the Internet today, right after HTTP. So this is, I mean, this is very serious. This is not, this is no joke. <clears throat> so what can you actually do um, with, uh, you know, what, what are the functional use cases for ATS, um, which is the TR69 server? So what, what you could do with them is provision devices. You know, when you, um, when you have, uh, you do a fresh install of a device, you just connect it that's your home, and then all of a sudden all of the, con con all of the configuration populates, etc. cetera. Um, the tech support remote management where you call your service provider and they just say, Okay, well, I'm seeing this. I'll, I'll fix your, I'll fix your router. Um, you can monitor for false errors, most activity, um, diagnostics. You can replace configuration and also deploy upgraded firmware. So I'm betting at least some of you, um, are surprised by at least the last word. Well, so remote, remote, um, silent firmware upgrades. This is, this is an interesting protocol. Let me tell you a short story. Um, this was uh, my home router. Uh, and, you know, I was starting to, to learn about TR69. And I was starting to explore. So I said, okay, let's, let's look at my router to see how it's defined. And then I started looking at the menus over there. And, and I don't see anything. So, you know, well, maybe I'll go to expert mode, right? I'm an expert. Yeah, that's okay. I can do that. Um, but still, nothing. There's nothing there. Um, so... I go into remote management, maybe that will be the thing. But no, this is this is just the web UI, the external facing web UI which is properly turned off by the way. Um so so this doesn't make sense to me because you know I know that TR sixty nine um I know that my provider uses TR sixty nine, I know that these devices enable it. So as it turns out, my service provider um was was using uh, uh was hiding the fact that it was in control. Um, using the extremely sophisticated HTML commenting technique. Yeah, so this is, this is right, uh, in the menu. So of course I enter the URL, and then, well, I see all the configuration. Um, but then I noticed that there's actually no legitimate way to turn this off. So turning off, uh, the informs is just like turning off the periodic hello messages. They're still in complete control. Um, what, you, what you could actually do was change the URL or change the user in the password and make it fail. Um, and apparently, some, uh, they noticed it uh, at one point, and then in the next firmware upgrade, um, this was the TR69 screen. So this is just, now there really is no way to disable TR69 unless, you know, you pop a shell on your router, and that's, you know, most people don't. Uh, so that's interesting. Um, now let's just really briefly talk about um, TR69 architecture. So on the right side we have the Internet, Internet Gateway device. This is a TR69 client. That's the that's the device that's being controlled. On the left side you have the auto configuration server, which is the TR69 server. Um, uh, of course um, you can also control many other devices in your homeland, and this is uh, natively supported by the protocol. Um, the auto configuration server is connected 
to many interesting internal assets for ISPs, such as the um, billing servers, file fee, of course, the call center. No, I don't have three minutes left. I'll, I'll take five. Uh, so, anyway, um, in my eyes, this is what I saw. There is one machine in this architecture that um, that is an attacker's dream because this, this one machine that's in control of fleets of devices here, right? And this is a machine um, that's on the public internet. Okay, it's just waiting out there on the public internet. I mean, interesting. What could you do if you had an ACS in motion control? So you could do many things. Um, you get lots of private data, SSID, you know, host names, MAC addresses, whatever, sometimes passwords. You could set every parameter, like, um, you know, the classic, changing the DNS servers, a lot of attacks today do that. Um, and, and, and many other uh, malicious stuff. You could download firmware logs, um, and you can go all the way and upload a whole new firmware, add it to your botnet, do whatever you want with it, download all the things you don't want to um, from your house. And... Sorry, I'm just going to go throughout this. Um, so this is a niche market. This is, I mean, there, there's nothing out there. No one has researched this before. And this is a niche market. This is service provider world. So we were looking around, you know, for TR69 parties out there. And, and you know, there's, there's no such place. You know how they say there's, like, there's a subreddit for everything on Reddit? Um, not for TR69. Which, I mean, by the way, after I gave this talk for the first time, someone opened the TR69 subreddit. <laughs> with this being the only content. Anyway, um, apparently there is uh, one website um, that really covers, you know, TR69 happenings. And this is TR69 Central. And, and, and don't you laugh about them. They have 16 followers on Twitter. They, they follow 23 people, including me. Um, but, you know, I'm joking. They actually do uh, pretty decent work. And, and they, they manage this vendor list of ACS. And, yeah, and... and you know, we start browsing the websites and we start looking at some software and we really kind of get the feeling that this is, you know, um, much ACS vendors, many features, such 1999 look and feel. And we get to see that there are, uh, you know, we get to understand that ACSs are basically web applications um, that's, that they're filled with lots of textual data that's coming in from uh, client devices. And, you know, we, we can all trust client devices, right? Uh, so, yeah, we found many problems, and I'm really going to run through this. Uh, but we find secure configurations to implementation. Yeah, one minute. Sorry about that. Uh, so let's talk about ACS authentication. This is supposed to be very important. We all understand this is such a critical protocol. It's, it should be well um, protected. So, uh, the standard clearly states that SSL is recommended. Um, and, and this is, you know, we've done a little survey. Uh, uh, we found a few, few hundred um, ISPs uh, with their uh, respective um, ACS servers. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to let you uh, play the game, um, but 19% of them um, used SSL. And this, is, and this is crazy because you all understand that, that one session of this as you can just upload a new firmware to someone and with with the whole, you know, uh, this is no leaks, you remember the quantum capabilities the NSA has, allegedly other intelligence agencies as well. So this, this means that one single quantum attack allows the NSA or anyone else to give you a new firmware at your house. This is interesting. Uh, I'm not going to talk about um, certificate of validation, but I'm going to tell you that a lot of implementations do not um, validate SSL certificates as they should. Uh, yeah, this is our obviously self-signed certificate, which passed as legit in, um, in many devices. Yeah, so this is the first one. Um, and really, in 30 seconds, I'm going to say that we started, uh, we surveyed several projects, open source projects, this, in this one, we found remote code execution after three days. Um, and yeah, we we're like, yes, this is what we thought we were going to find because we, we imagined it would be this easy. And then we go on to this next one, and this is a fairly new one, um, another open source project. 
and we start auditing, and two days later we get remote code execution. So this one's actually kind of nice, but I'm not going to walk you through it this time. Uh, and the worst thing about this is running as root, so you can do fun things, fun stuff like this. Uh, yes. Uh, for the last, really last slide, I guess, or one last, one before the last. Uh, so we were scanning for Genie ACS, we were scanning the internet, and then we found an instance in one um, Middle Eastern ISP, and that, that would, that's not Israel, so it's a very Muslim state. Um, but, you know, it, it was exposed, yeah, so, uh, so another two part face bomb, and I called them to give them their the vulnerability report, and the support center was not thrilled with an Israeli calling about vulnerable infrastructure. Uh, but anyway, this is, you know, this is truly, uh, we're responsible, uh, we're responsible security authority, so, um, yeah, this, this was their, um, uh, web interface, and we just gave them the report and we hope them close it. So, yes, we report that again. Uh, another undisclosed ver um, vendor, very, uh, massive global install base, uh, we took control of the infrastructure with permission, we showed them, and this was how many devices we had under our control. For that particular instance, we just picked one name out of the names of the vendors that uh, were exposed. What can you do? You can hide under a couch and never use the internet again. Uh, of course, that's not what you can do. Um, what you can do is audit your TFC tonight set, um, uh, setting. We'd really like to see more awareness to TR69. We'd really like to see some more research, maybe from you guys, the security community. Um, some future work, so actually we're working on improving the actual standard with the broadband forum. Uh, and we also have some very interesting results from an, uh, uh, from TR69 client phonage, and hopefully we'll get to see, you'll get to see them in December in 31C3. I appreciate uh, your time, and I'm sorry for this being such a rush. If you really want to talk about this, I'm glad to just come by there. Thank you.